Well, howdy guys and gals. Welcome to the clutter of the social regressive. My bench here has been a mess for a couple of weeks and I, I know that it looks terrible, but I had a bunch of stuff I had to do. I had to get some ammo ready at the last minute for that hog hunt that I went on. I've had some other things I've had to hand load or kind of tweak around. So uh, yeah, I need to get organized, but first what I need to do is uh, get into a new press. We're going to be doing a lot of hand loading for the, uh, the the project rifle that has been on hold for a while and i'm so sorry guys that 12 fv project rifle has been just kind of sitting over here for a little bit uh, because i have just been really under the gun on some other things so we're going to get back to it here in a second but first i've got to get uh, a press in place i used to have <coughs> this pacific that you're used to seeing on my bench great little o press this is one of the uh this might be the original o press right here very strong, very sturdy, very precise, great for my rifle ammo. And we're replacing it with this monster. This is the RCBS Rock Chucker Supreme. And if you're wondering what the difference is between the Rock Chucker Supreme and some of these others, well, this one is a, a much better workout. This is huge. I don't know if you can really see the difference from this angle between these two presses, but this is a monster. It is very overbuilt. And that is exactly what I need. Overbuilt is just built enough. <clears throat> because there are certain things that I do with brass that are not your average hand loader ones. Necking down brass, <clears throat> you know, resizing to make new cartridges overall, or doing, uh, if you have military brass and you want to get rid of the crimp that's in those primer pockets, you really have to put a lot of torque on those. And uh, for that, we're going to need one heck of a press and this is it this is just a monster right here it's huge and even the other parts that come on here like the uh, the handle let me see if i have that laying around yeah here it is even the handle itself is quite a bit larger than the one that came off that pacific right there so yeah this is going to be able to take care of anything that i need and it's going to have really nice precision going for it uh, this piston that comes up through here and just the way that all this is machined very precise overall. It's going to be great for uh, rifle ammo. And of course that O shape, it's just not going to flex or do anything like that. This is going to be very good. And one of the other things that I should point out here, you might notice this little guy on the bench. This is new to me. I got to use this for the first time making that uh, 75 grain boat tail hollow point ammo for the hog hunt. Uh, this is the RCBS Brass Boss. We're going to take a look at this in another video. This is wicked cool. It does all of the extra little uh, work that you need to do on your brass before you, you know, actually start loading it up. So if you have to do your, uh, uh, your priming, or excuse me, your, your deburring, if you need to clean up your uh, primer pockets or anything like that, it actually comes with all the little tools to do that. Super cool little thing. But now let's get back to this. There is one tricky bit of business installing this press. Um, I'm gonna show you the way that I built my bench. This is, okay, this is three quarter inch plywood up top. This is gonna to be a lot like the benches that you have. And there are different ways to build this where maybe you take your, your stud, your two by four, maybe you lay it this way under the, uh, the lip right here to give it some stability. But most of us I've seen are gonna lay it up like this. So this is actually a two by four right here coming up right to the edge and that attaches to the, uh, the big legs right here. Now there is a problem with this. The depth of these little slots right here for our 3 8 inch screws, to hold this in place, it just takes two screws. These are set up so that if you do have a bench with this kind of depth, let me show you. The screw just barely clears. You're not going to have room for washers, nuts, anything like that. Uh, it's just going to be pretty difficult to get this attached to your bench. And maybe, you know, if you kind of relieved it a little bit, you could bring your uh, bolt up from the bottom and kind of fit it that way. But for this, I wanted to make sure that I had everything squared away. Um, this is going to have a lot of torque on it when I actually do some of these operations. And I want for this kind of housing for the piston here for the uh, for that little cylinder I want it to be up against something so I'm not just torquing on these bolts and you know maybe yanking it out of the bench so what I've done 
is I made a measurement to figure out exactly where the halfway point was on the, uh, the studs that are down here. And then I stacked up one inch, it turns out, of plywood right here. I just attached it to the side of the bench. And uh, now I can drill straight through that stud, go straight through the top of the bench, down through there, and I can attach a very long bolt underneath right here. And I think that's gonna work out great. Probably some of you guys are gonna point out something uh, more brilliant that I should have done. And uh, please leave a comment. I'll put it up at the top if you think of some uh, a better way to get this attached. I know there are some like mounting plates and things, but I wanted to go on the cheap. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna work out just fine anyway. So we're gonna install this right now. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark out, there we go, where this is going to sit, and my center points. And one of the tricky things here is I'm gonna be drilling this 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. I need to go straight down and make sure that I don't deviate. I wanna come straight out the bottom of this two x four right here. Uh, so I've made myself a little guide. You can buy yourself a special jig for uh, drilling 90 degree holes. But I figured, why don't I just pop this into my drill press, make it a nice 90 degrees, and then use it as a pilot to go down. So uh, we'll see how this works. That got me most of the way. Now to finish this off. Well, that's loud. Good grief. Looks good, looks good. This one's gonna need a little persuasion. Once I stack a washer on the top, washer on the bottom with a lock washer and a nut, and I do have enough clearance. It was awfully close though. The threaded portion of this bolt is only about, oh, I don't know, an inch long at the end, inch and a half, something like that. And it was really, really close. So thankfully, we have enough clearance there and I'll be able to tighten this down neatly. Now to attach the priming arm. Instead of threading this through here and attaching on the backside with the nut, this one goes the other direction. This nut is going to be used to tighten up against this, uh, this little surface right here. This is quite a long priming arm on this. And if you're wondering what size this nut is, you're looking at 15 sixteenths or 24 millimeters. So it's a little bit of, it's kind of an odd one. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that by hand. And then this one turns the other direction to lock it in place. All right. A couple of things to think about with the Rock Chucker Supreme. Not only is it very heavily built and should not bend under any kind of load, and you probably don't have to worry about the handle bending or snapping off or anything uh, when you're doing some of those more difficult tasks, but this overall has a much longer draw so that you can get everything from your little 17 caliber all the way up through 50 BMG. This can actually handle 50 BMG, 338 Lapua Magnum, uh, any of those big magnums like that. 20 millimeter Vulcan, yeah, you're probably out of luck, but uh, this should do everything else. You're probably used to a lot of presses like this Lee right here, that once you've deprimed, it's gonna kick the primer 
down out the front and then someone has to figure out what to actually do with that primer after the fact in this case they just kind of spill off to the sides this right here actually kicks its primers out to the back there's a hole kind of a shaft drilled back here angles out and it's going to dump the primers into this little uh, tray right here and it's going to dump them out to the sides it should be pretty easy to deal with and pretty easy to install from what i can see here And there we go, that's it. One last piece to this puzzle, we do have the priming arm, which attaches via a thumb nut right here. That just screws right into the side right there, and then when you want to do your priming, you can just flip this over there. Um, it does come with two different size uh, kind of primer rams. So you have your small and your large, and then it does also come with a spring you see right here uh, to be able to keep that cup pushed up when it's all attached. That just threads on right there. Most of the time I do large rifle primers for my stuff. So yeah, that just threads right on. And then there's a hole cut through the center of the ram so that you can uh, kind of torque this down if you'd like. That's it right there. So here's the priming arm in action. You can see when we go up, spits it out, back down. And this is one where if you do want to flip this around to do the small rifle primers, you have to take the arm off or at least unscrew things here. So you might want to make sure that you keep these extra parts in some little bin that you have around. Don't lose these. Thanks a bunch for watching you guys. I hope that this has been informative and that this helps clear up some questions you might have on how to install the Rock Chucker Supreme or what the Rock Chucker Supreme is and what kind of separates it from the competition. We will do a full review on this once I've had a chance to really test it. But overall, this just seems to be a very heavily built, precise, uh, just, you know, kind of that long draw model. This is gonna be able to take care of all of the precision rifle work that I'm going to be doing here in the future. And we do have that 12 FV project, so make sure that if you haven't, you subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll be seeing you guys around as we uh, do the pillar bedding, the epoxy bedding, hand loading for that rifle, and then finally get out and really test it in some kind of fun scenarios and see if we can make those connections out at a mile. Uh, I'm really sorry that I'm behind the eight ball on all this, you guys. I have had some real difficulties getting out here into the garage to uh, shoot films. I've just had a lot going on in the background, but fortunately it looks like everything's kind of stabilizing and I'll be able to get back to uh, doing some more of this for you. Thank you patrons of the Destructive Arts for keeping the lights on, keeping the cameras rolling. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month, I'll put a link to Patreon around here. Thank you Sportsman's Guide at the 338 Lapua Magnum level and Peter at the, uh, the 300 Win Mag level. Yeah, I really hope to see you guys around. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.